everyone and welcome to this May Bullet Journal Plan With Me video. Today we have a pretty decoration heavy theme with some tigers, black backgrounds and foiled paints. I've been wanting to do something similar to my February 2022 theme for a while and I finally had some extra time to spend on this theme. I also wanted to do something completely different from the previous light and cute spring themes. So without further introductions, let's get started with this cover spread. The cover spread will be the most drawing heavy in this theme and I know it might look a little bit intimidating but let's take our time here and go through all of this step by step. I'll be starting everything in this theme with a quite detailed pencil sketch and we are drawing pretty much everything directly onto the notebook so there's no need for extra watercolor papers or anything like that. I think the main focus on this cover spread will be this tiger illustration in the bottom corner and I thought we would go through that a little bit slower and then I'll speed through some of the other pencil sketching parts and instead show how I drew everything with the black pen which you can see a little bit better in the video. But anyway, when it comes to drawing animals, I feel like I say this every time, but I think it's so important to find some reference pictures because without one, it will be very difficult to draw anything realistic or with the right proportions. Once you get the main outlines and posture right with the help of a reference picture, you can then change some details to make it your own, like for example the angle of the head, the facial expression, or maybe the placement of the legs. For drawing the body specifically, it sometimes helps me to imagine the muscle structure, especially in the legs. So you could draw some light circles to indicate the muscles that might help to visualize the body a little bit better. It's not necessary though, and in general, there's never one right way to draw animals. For example, I've never really learned to use guidelines for these types of drawings, but if for you it would be easier to have some guidelines on the face, for example, go for it and slowly learn to incorporate that in your sketching process. I rely quite heavily on hand-eye coordination, which is something that will get better with time and practice. I also erased and redrew certain areas here a few times. For instance, I felt like my tiger's head was not in the right place and it looked a little bit too small compared to the rest of the body, so I had to redraw it a few times. But anyway, I chose not to worry about this stripe pattern in the pencil sketching phase to avoid muddying the picture too much with some unnecessary pencil lines. So after I had sketched the tiger, I moved on to some of these bigger flowers and leaves. The way we're gonna work on this picture is to first draw all the bigger details and then work around them with the black acrylic pens to create the background. We'll also add some smaller details on top of the black background in the end because going over every small flower and leaf is very difficult and tedious. Well anyway, I'm not really sure what type of flowers these big ones are. Maybe some kind of mixture between lotus and peony flowers. They have these pretty long spiky petals. I usually start drawing flowers by making the center part and then I start to draw the petals around it which helps to keep the shapes more even. I also wanted there to be some bigger leaves so I drew a few of these banana leaves around the tiger and flowers but after that let's finally go over everything here with a black pen. I used some different sizes of my Pigma Micron pens. The smaller sizes are great for sketching purposes and then we'll use some of the thicker ones to cover any small areas of the black background. So first I just went over all the outlines in the tiger and then started to color these stripes as well.
I try my best to consider the shape of the body when drawing these stripes. So in some parts, you'll need to kind of lift or rotate them a little bit to get the direction correct. Drawing the stripes might also feel a little bit weird at first, but once we start to have enough of them, they'll really change the appearance of our tiger and make it look much more detailed. But then it was time to draw over everything else in the cover spread, which means all the big flowers, leaves, and other details I sketched out of the camera. This drawing phase was the part where I spent the most time on this cover spread, and then I speeded things up in the coloring phase. I also actually changed my approach in the upcoming spreads because I felt like especially drawing all these small details was very time consuming and going around them with the black was a little bit pointless too since it was very difficult to perfectly color around them and in the end I added a lot more flowers and stuff with the paint pens. These swirly clouds were the last thing I drew here and I wanted them to somehow frame and go around these May letters here in the bottom left corner. But now that there's a lot going on on this spread, we are finally ready to start coloring the background. I used these black Uniposca markers for it that I have in different sizes. I mainly used the 5M and 1M sizes for the coloring in this video. And what I love about these is that they don't bleed through the notebook paper. They also dry completely waterproof and don't smudge, even if you go over them with watercolors. So that was very helpful when coloring all these details. In the later pages, I was also able to paint over them with wash paints. The only bad point is that the black surface dries a little bit shiny, so the page doesn't look as smooth and perfect as you would maybe hope. I actually think it looks a little bit better in the video, but in real life, my pages were definitely a little bit wrinkly and the black color is quite uneven, so just keep that in mind. After adding the watercolors on top, the pages will suffer a little bit more, but I think it's still quite amazing to be able to create this level of art piece in a flat journal without having zero ghosting or bleeding through to the other side. Anyway, after covering the whole background with the black markers, it's time for the last part of the cover, which is the coloring. So we're starting again from the tiger and I decided to use watercolors here. They allow you to go directly over all the black line work without lightening them too much. And it's also a pretty quick way to color. 
The downside is that the notebook paper doesn't really allow much blending, so you're kind of stuck with the color you apply. They also dry pretty quickly. But anyway, I wasn't sure what kind of all-around color I wanted for this theme yet, so I was slowly progressing here and tried to keep everything pretty light and muted at this point. So when I had added some color to the tiger, the bigger leaves, and some other easy targets here, I decided to do the foil parts to see how it would change the overall look of the page and what colors would go with it in the end. I used this copper paint which has a pretty strong foil effect. I think it looks so beautiful when you turn the pages around and this color also went really nicely with the tiger drawings in my opinion. I think in my old theme, I was using a pure gold and I also went with some very decorative letters, but I wanted to keep things a little bit more minimal this time, especially since this cover spread already had so much going on. So I chose to go with these basic serif font letters. The foil paint can also be applied on top of the black background, but it's still a little bit easier to get it to look opaque if you apply it on top of white, which is why I try to leave these empty spaces for the letters. Then I added the same foiled color to the borders of this image, which was a little bit difficult to do with all the decorations overlapping it, but I think it did give a nice finishing touch to this whole spread. And then it was finally time to finish the coloring. I think I was mostly struggling with the bigger flowers because I kind of wanted to leave them white, but I felt like they still needed some shadowing. I also didn't want to use too much time here anymore, so I kind of speeded through some of this coloring part. Maybe not my best work, but I felt like if I would spend a lot of time with every step of this whole process, I could have never finished this whole theme in time to post this video. Anyway, some of these small flowers look really weird until I added some of these black lines and dots to the middle of them, and then I decided to eventually color these in this brighter reddish-orange color to get a little bit more color to this spread. This was definitely a more is more type of cover, so after coloring everything else, I added lots of these smaller flowers, dots, and leaves with these acrylic pens I had, which in the end didn't look that different from the ones I left white from the start, so I actually decided to use this kind of method more in the rest of the theme to save some time. Anyway, I know this was a lot, but you could absolutely just pick a few elements from this whole spread and save a lot of time and effort. 
but now that we are done with all of this, it's time to move on. Next, we'll set up a monthly calendar spread, which is the first actually usable spread in this theme. I use the monthly calendar to write out all important dates, like any appointments, my video schedule and so on. And then later you can transfer all those things in your weekly pages and not forget anything important. To take a small break from all the drawing and painting, we are first writing out the whole calendar and the title. I feel like whenever the decorations are heavier and darker, I like to keep the rest of the things on these spreads very minimal. So we are just using these two black fine liners to draw the calendar and finishing things off with the foiled paint again. So I wanted the whole top and right side of this page to be covered with the black background again. And I actually made a few mistakes here when lining the borders. So I forgot to sketch everything first that I wanted to go over this black line. So I had to cover some of these lines later on the right side. And I also forgot that I wanted to leave a small white gap between the black area and the sides of the pages. But I was eventually able to fix all of that in a way that wasn't too noticeable. But after painting the May title again, I drew just a few of these bigger elements. So one large flower and then some banana leaves around it. And I also wanted this hanging wind bell of sorts on this page. So as you can see, the black lines are now covering the decorations, but I was able to cover them with gouache paints. So we are going to use gouache on this spread. I just wanted to see the difference and which method would be easier and faster. So after coloring the black background again, I started painting the leaves first and then we'll move on to painting some extra plants on this spread. I added a lot of water into the gouache paint here in the beginning to make it thinner and behave more like watercolors, but it still covered the black line work quite a lot. This is the reason I usually don't use gouache for these types of drawings, though I think it works a little bit better with the bullet journal paper. But then I did use a much thicker paint consistency for all the extra leaves and flowers. a little bit tricky to paint on a black surface because you never really know what color the paint is gonna dry. If you blend any amount of white into the paint mixture, the color almost always dries a little bit lighter than when you initially added it to the canvas. So anyway, I wanted these first leaves to be very dark and then we're gonna start layering some lighter leaves on top of them to create a more dimensional layered effect. I like the look of the leaves going over these black areas, which is why I wanted to leave the small gap in the first place. And then when we've added enough of these, I started to paint some loose, lighter flower groups. I should have probably added a brighter yellow or red on my palette to get the flower color closer to a peachy tone, but I was honestly too lazy to do that. I had some dried gouache paints on my palette that I used in my previous painting tutorial. So instead of adding all fresh paints, I was just using some of these old paints on my palette by reactivating them with water. These flower groups don't need to be anything special. I was just adding this background layer and then going over it with a lighter color to create a little bit more defined flower shapes. 
In the end, I also added some more small flowers with the paint pens, and I think eventually this spread ended up having a really pretty summery feel to it, even though the decorations are done quite quickly and loosely. But anyway, that's it for the monthly calendar spread and then let's move on to some planning content for May. I always like to have a clear monthly planning spread in my bullet journal. It's something I've done from the start and it really helps me to focus and get a clear vision for what I want to accomplish in the upcoming month. It's also a great place for some self-reflection or reviewing your bigger goals, so I highly recommend you to try out something similar. Anyway, we're starting this spread by cutting this middle page, and then before starting with all the decorations, I wanted to again do some actual bullet journaling content here. So I decided to write the planning title with the foil paint, which makes it look really pretty, though it's quite difficult to keep the letters even with this kind of flimsy watercolor brush. But under the title, I list three of the most important tasks I'll need to get done this month. And then I also added this open focus section where I can write about my overall expectations for this month and things I want to focus on. I usually prefer writing in this style, but you could always use bullet points or any other method if this open brain dump style is not for you. After setting up everything here on the first spread, we are briefly jumping to the decorations. I kind of went back and forth here because I wanted to get an idea for the whole layout and some of these decorations were necessary to do first. So I started with another tiger drawing, this one we'll see from the back. So I think an important thing here is to have an idea of the spine of the tiger and how it affects the stripe pattern in the back. I left the eyes of my tigers white this time. I think it gives this almost artistic empty look to the eyes and you also won't need to worry about messing them up. I drew some banana leaves here again and after that we have everything we need in place to create the black backgrounds. Again, especially this middle page tried to curve a little bit from all the black paint so I tried my best to use these paper clips in the corners to get the pages dry a little bit more straight. But we're gonna finish all these decorations later and now we are moving right onto the other side so if you don't have any use for this middle section it could easily be used for some other decorations but i decided to save this space for some monthly diary where i can write something brief throughout the month of may I felt like the borders on this center thing needed the foil paint as well so that the shape would stood out better from everything else. And after doing that, we will continue on the right page. My weekly pages this month are gonna be quite simple, so I thought I could use these four boxes where I can write a short plan for each week. So maybe just a few important tasks I need to get done or certain project I need to focus on that week. 
doing stuff like this helps me to be more productive and always know exactly what I need to work on. I feel like working for yourself definitely requires some managing and planning like this and having these focus sections really helps me to plan ahead and make sure I'm not trying to take too much on my plate at once. But then, since there was a little bit of room on the top of the page as well, I decided to leave this for another reflective question of how to balance work and free time. I know this is something many of us struggle with or would like to improve in our lives, so maybe taking a short moment to reflect on that, maybe think about a few bad habits that are lowering your efficiency during your work time, or maybe you could try to change up your daily rhythm a little bit. Whatever it might be, taking a moment to reflect on that would probably not be a bad thing. But then as the last step, it was time to color these decorations before we can move on again. So I started by painting the tiger and bigger leaves with watercolors. And then we're gonna create some gouache leaves and flowers on this spread too. I actually really ended up liking all the colors on this whole planning section. There's just something about the black areas that's really eye-catching and I loved the copper foil paint mixed with these summery green and orange colors. Also, especially the gouache leaves and flowers are really simple to paint. There are really no details in them, so all you need to do are these easy shapes. So if drawing the tigers and big flowers seems a little bit too much for you, I think creating a theme just surrounding these easier leaves and flowers might still turn out so beautiful. But anyway, after we have everything ready, that's it for the planning section. And now we have one more Dutch door spread to set up, which will be a combination of the weekly pages and the monthly reflection. We are starting the spread again by outlining all the decorations so that we are able to color the black areas around them and get a little bit better idea of how the overall layout is going to look like. I was a little bit tired of drawing the same type of flowers at this point, so I changed it up here slightly and went for these different types of flower branches. And then we're gonna create a black vertical stripe here that's gonna line up with the Dutch door page. Again, I skipped the pencil sketching phase here, but that is what's helping me here to outline all these shapes. I think these flowers might be a little bit more challenging just because they have a little bit more folds and ruffles in them. But I think again, some reference pictures and patient sketching will be the key things to make it happen. On the right edge, I went with this similar flower that we've already drawn a few times in this theme. 
and the idea was to have these black areas framing the Dutch door pages in the middle. And by doing that, we can enjoy these bigger pieces of artwork the whole time we are using this theme. So now that we have a little bit better idea of the whole layout, I started filling the pages here by creating a simple happy tracker on this first page. I had a long break from using any kind of happy trackers, but I've kind of been into them again this year. I sometimes still forget to use them, but especially if you're trying out something new in your routine, I think having a happy tracker in your bullet journal is really helpful with the consistency because you have a visible reminder of everything you need to get done. So I highly recommend giving it a try. But after that, the weekly layout itself is very simple as it usually is in my bullet journals. I admire people who have the time and energy to create an individual pretty weekly layout for each week, but I'm not one of those people. I need to have something ready to go because there's a big chance that I'm not gonna set up a weekly page if it's gonna take me more than like five minutes. So that's why these Dutch door layouts and the short daily boxes work so well for me. It allows me to list just a few important things for each day that I need to get done before going to sleep. But then this last spread will be for the monthly reflection. I decided to combine it here because I had already spent quite a lot of time with this theme and I needed to get it done. So after writing another foiled title here, I drew a few different sections here. The first one will be the scale from 1 to 10 on these different areas of my life that I can rate the whole previous month by. I've done this a few months in a row now and I think it's really interesting to be able to compare stuff like this and see how different things like maybe busy times and so on have an effect on different areas of your life. Then we have a few open sections again, like this what's on my mind question that allows me to do some free brain dump or feeling dump at the end of the month. And then I often try to include these gratefulness sections to take a moment to appreciate everything good that's happening in my life. Lastly, I have a few rows to write about the biggest highs and lows of the whole month. But yeah, now all we have left is the last coloring section. I feel like this must be one of my longest videos because the drawings took a little bit more time. And I also tried to keep the drawing and coloring parts in this video a little bit slower than in some of my other videos. I'll obviously still need to speed them up quite a lot because otherwise this video would be many hours long. It takes quite a lot of time to draw and set up all of this in real life, but I still hope that it will give you some ideas and some guidance of how to approach drawings like this and how to create these black and white decorations. So after we're done with the final coloring here, we can finally announce the whole May theme ready. I really hope that especially those of you who've been waiting for a more decoration heavy theme enjoyed this video. And if you did, make sure to subscribe for more if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having an amazing day or night wherever you are. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye-bye.